Hey there, and welcome to Applying Makeup in Photoshop. In this section, we're gonna show you how to actually apply makeup onto a photo in Photoshop. We're gonna be using the brush tool, we're gonna be using blend if and layer blend modes, all kinds of really cool tips to actually apply makeup in Photoshop. Now, my piece of advice here is don't overdo it. Sometimes it can be, it can look really, really nice when you do it subtly, and if you go too much, it just tends to look really, really fake. So keep it relatively subtle, and you'll be good to go. All right, guys, let's jump into the tutorial. Hey there, and welcome to how to add makeup in Photoshop. All right, now to get started with this section, we're gonna go to section eight, over here to images, and to Florin Retouch six. Let's go ahead and drag this right into Photoshop, and uh, we're gonna get started. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this section of the tutorial. We're gonna be showing you guys how to add eyeshadow, how to darken the upper lid. We're gonna work on the eyeliner, both on the top and the bottom. I'm gonna show you how to add lashes. We're gonna clean and fill up her brow a little bit. We're gonna do some lipstick and we're gonna do some work with blush as well. So you'll be able to use these techniques on any photo to add makeup in Photoshop. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do, we're gonna start off with our eyeshadow because it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and we're gonna go down to where it says solid color. And I'm just gonna choose something that <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it is right now. I just wanna be able to see it. All right, so there's our solid color. Now I'm gonna change my layer blend mode from normal. We're gonna go down to overlay. All right, or right, soft light or multiply. Yeah, I'm kinda of digging multiply. It is eyeshadow after all. Okay. So you're gonna be using your blending modes quite a bit with makeup, whether you're gonna be lightening an area or darkening it or multiplying it. But I would suggest starting off with multiply, overlay, and soft light. Those are the three that you're gonna do most often, similar to dodging and burning. All right, let's go to multiply. Now here on my layer mask, I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert that layer mask. And we're gonna use our brush tool. I'm gonna to right click and choose one of the Florin retouching brushes. Now, if you haven't loaded these up just yet, just go to your little uh, preferences icon here and go down to load brushes. We'll go to section one, getting started, brushes, and then double click here on your brushes and it's gonna load you these Florin retouching brushes. All right, now the trick to painting in eyeshadow is you wanna make sure you're at a really low flow. So I'm gonna hit shift one. That's gonna put my flow down to 10%. That way, I'm able to build up an effect. So if you see, I'm barely painting here, and as I paint more and more and more and more, it's just gonna build up, and I haven't let go of the cursor yet. Okay, so that's the real trick, because we wanna be able to feather it in, and this build up effect is really, really gonna help out there. Okay, so before we get started painting in our eyeshadow, let's just talk really briefly about where a good idea for eyeshadow to go with. All right. Now this area here, you actually wanna keep this area relatively light. So I would not suggest putting eyeshadow here. Don't put eyeshadow there. All right, your eyeshadow, you wanna kinda of come around here and create a little bit of a V. Well, I guess it would be a V rotated around in this area. Basically connecting the shape of the eye to the outermost reach of the eyebrow. So in this one, it would come out like this. There we go right around there. And that's the shape for eyeshadow. And then we'll have eyeshadow on the top lid as well. So that's kind of the shape we're gonna go for. We are gonna be feathering it out. All right, let's just delete that. So here on my layer for my color fill, what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna choose our brush tool, make sure you're at 10% flow. So shift one to get there. And don't worry about painting over top of your eye. If I do this a little bit, it's not a big deal it's gonna, I can just use my layer mask and erase this away if I need to do that. Okay guys, so don't worry about it if it covers up your eye. All right. So what would I wanna do is basically just start painting on really subtly and you can see I'm using a really large brush and I'm not pressing very hard. The goal here is to get something that's really nice and subtle and blends in really well with the rest of the skin. All right. There we go. Looking really good. All right, so we have a really nice subtle eyeshadow now. Now color doesn't really matter at this point. Like I just chose this blue color, but 
we can change that at any time. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna kind of cut it off there. All right, so that's a pretty good start for the eyeshadow. Now the next thing we're gonna go in, right now it, it looks okay, but it doesn't look super real. And the reason is this this is just, you know, we just painted it on there and it has no, um, no regard for texture. This eyeshadow does not take into account any texture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna allow the lighter specks of skin to show through the eyeshadow. And to do that, we're gonna use Blend Diff. So let's go ahead and double click here on our color fill layer. And here where it says Blend Diff, I'm gonna choose the underlying layer not be visible where the underlying layer is lighter, okay? So hold Alt or Option. We're gonna click here and drag from the right to the left. And I wanna go just to the point, you see that? Where we can start to see the texture through whatever I paint. Isn't that amazing? So there's the before, looks like it was done in Photoshop. Alt or Option, click and drag this right side there, and right about there, you can see the eyeshadow starts to actually interact with the image, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now let's go back to our brush tool. We can paint it in a little bit more. That looks really, really nice there. All right. And up until now, we haven't really messed around with color or anything. We'll do that in just a second. Just kind of getting it in the right place. All right, now I'm gonna do the right side and, my, and the left side separately. I'll explain that. I'll explain why in just a minute. Okay, so now that that looks nice around the eye, I just wanna go in here and paint black on my layer mask over top of the actual eye because I, I don't need the eyeshadow to be visible you know <laughs> I really don't want it to be visible inside of the eye that does not gonna you know, do it you know it's not gonna help out all right cool so we'll go ahead and make it invisible in through there all right cool I think that looks pretty good so notice I've left it on the top lid. You can either choose to have the eyeshadow be visible on the top lid or not. Okay, now what we're gonna do is choose our color. So to do so, just double click right here and we can start playing around with our colors. All right, now I'm not a professional makeup artist, but generally you wanna just choose a color that's gonna look good on your subject. And I would stick to something neutral, you know, something like if you wanted to go like a smoky eye, you could do something like this. If you want to introduce some color, you just go over to the right. So here on the left is desaturated. Here on the right is more saturated. Now you can go with a lighter color by going up and a darker color by going down. Now the reason I like using this color fill adjustment layer is it's just a really nice, easy way. After I got my layer mask in place, it's an easy way for me to go in and see what a bunch of different colors look like. And it really allows me to just fine tune all those adjustments. All right, that kind of looks nice. All right, between there and there. Yeah, this is kind of nice. Maybe just a little bit more saturated. All right, a little bit more red. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Let's bring it a little bit lighter and a little bit less saturated. There we go. Now that we have that a little bit better in place, I'm gonna go back in with my brush tool and just further refine where this is gonna be visible and not visible. All right, and I'm just painting black and white in different areas. go and kind of paint a nice line up there. You want to use a soft edge brush for this. Beautiful. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's just turn this off and on. We can see what our makeup looks like on our subject. Now, what we're gonna do is duplicate this layer. Control or Command J to duplicate it, okay? 
And we're gonna go ahead and paint the layer mask all black. So I'm gonna hit Shift Backspace, which brings up my fill dialog. And then I'm just gonna fill it with black. All right, and you probably guessed by now, this one is for the other eye. All right. Okay, now keep in mind, my layer blend mode is set to multiply. So it's going to go ahead and darken everywhere that I paint. All right, and we've got the same color as we do on the other side because I just duplicated that layer. Beautiful. That looks really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and add another. I wanna put another color on the top of the lid. So let's just do this again. Solid color, let's go to like a nice dark green here. I'm gonna hit Control or Command I on my layer mask here. And we're just gonna paint in this nice dark green. Set our layer blend mode to multiply here right on top of the lid. All right, with just a tiny bit feathering out. All right, now here on the this side of the lid, what I'm gonna do is choose a large brush and I'm gonna paint black with a really large brush and that's just going to, I'm just painting like small circles here. That's just gonna allow it to fade out really nicely. See that? So here's what my layer mask looks like. You see how I faded that out really, really nicely. Beautiful. Now, we're not stuck with this green color, are we? No, we're not. We can choose any color we want. Um, there we go. We're again gonna double click. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option to make sure it's not visible where the underlying layer is lighter, which is gonna make it look more real. Same like we did on the layer before. And now I can just choose my different colors. Let's say we want like a more saturated red or like a blue or purple. That looks kind of nice actually. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that color. Cool, so let's hit okay. There we go. And you know what, I think it doesn't need to be that dark. So let's go ahead and just bring this a little bit lighter. All right, cool. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J to duplicate that to a new layer. Okay, and now we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna paint it on the other eye. All right, so we're gonna paint white on our layer mask, this time at about 70% flow, just to make sure we have all of that area covered. There we go. We're gonna choose a larger brush and change our flow down to about 10%. Get a little bit of fade going on from one to the other. And back in here as well. All right, and then same here on this side. Remember, we're just gonna paint black with a really large brush, and that's just gonna help it fade out really nice and naturally. Okay. Yeah, looking really good. All right. And you can continue to go in here and do all kinds of other stuff if you like. Let's do a little bit of a shimmer. I'm gonna see if I can do a gold shimmer on her on the top of her lid. I don't know if I can do this, but we're gonna try. All right, now this one, we're gonna set to something like Color Dodge, which is insane, really, really bright. Um, it's too much right now, so I'm gonna double click here. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and say, don't be visible where my underlying layer is darker, just where it's lighter. All right, and let's hit okay. So I don't really have most of my image in mind when I'm looking at this. Really all I am looking at is right here. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command I on this layer mask here to invert that. And let's just grab our brush tool 
and then I'm going to paint white right over top of this area here. That's going to give me the shimmer effect that I'm looking for. All right, now let's choose our color. All right, that looks cool. And we'll add some more on the other side too. Cool, looking good. Okay guys, well, I think as far as eyeshadow is concerned, I think we nailed it. Now, keep in mind, I'm choosing colors based on this image and you can always, you know, put these layers on and off and change your opacity and all kinds of other things. In fact, we're gonna do some of those things because I think it was a little bit too much. There we go. Let's group all those layers together. Double click here and we're gonna call this eyeshadow. All right, there's the before and the after with the eyeshadow. Looking good. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna create a new layer, group this with itself, and we're gonna call this eyelashes. I just heard that like you can get eyelash extensions and like they're pretty expensive, but <laughs> we're gonna do that in Photoshop. All right, now what I wanna do is choose a brush. I'm gonna right click and choose my hardness right about 90%. All right, and we want a really small brush. And I'm just gonna paint, start painting over here, um, making my brush smaller and smaller as I go along, just so I have an idea of like how they should look. All right, that looks pretty good. Cool, now it's time to start painting. Now I'm using a pressure sensitive tablet, which allows me to paint in a way that is very natural. If you guys are using a mouse, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. With a mouse, you still can make strokes like this, they might not have like a very nice sharp end to them. So what I would recommend doing is hitting E for the eraser tool, choosing a very large eraser brush, and then just like painting it right at the edge. And do you see how it kind of makes it fade out there? All right, I'll just try one with my mouse. This is even harder with the mouse than I thought it would be. All right, let's just grab the eraser tool and then something like that. All right. There we go. It's E for the eraser tool. All right, and my other suggestion, especially for those of you who are using pressure sensitive tablets, is it's really nice, it's actually really easy to draw like left and right. Even with like a mouse, you can you can go left and right fairly well, but like up and down and like certain angles can be a little bit harder. So if I need to paint in a certain direction, um, oftentimes, like for me, it's easy to do this. I can do this all day long, but to create a nice one like this is kind of harder. I don't know, it's just based on like, you know, drawing and stuff. So what you can do is use the rotate tool to just rotate your image. So the rotate tool is R. If you hit R and then click and drag, you can rotate your image any way you want to. So for instance, if I want to rotate my image like this and then, you know, draw a couple lashes in just like that, I can do that really nice and easily and I don't have to like start drawing in a way that's not comfortable for my hand. All right, now the top lashes, maybe I'll hit R and rotate those all the way around there. All right, and then I'll use my brush tool like this. All right, so just trying to figure out what tools are going to make your life a little easier. All right, R back again. And if you want to make sure it's rotated right back to the right place, hold down the shift key and that's going to keep you going by 15 degrees. So hold down the shift key with R and then you just point it right back to the top and you're good to go. All right, let's do the same thing with here. I'm gonna paint down a couple times. You don't wanna fill the eyelashes in too thick. You know, it's, it's gonna to start to look fake after a little while. Cool, 
I'm just, you know, looking at the other lashes, seeing what they do, and trying to do the same thing. All right, let's make that visible and invisible. Cool, I think we could use a couple more bigger lashes in here. So I'm gonna create a new layer, choose a brush that's a little bit larger, and then just paint in a couple bigger lashes. <laughs> there we go. Visible and invisible. Looking good. All right, we're gonna erase a couple here. I don't think they should be that dense. All right, there we go. So that's the trick with lashes. They're really not too difficult. Um, basically, you're just painting in tiny little hairs. Um, you know, not, not too bad. All right, so let's see the before and the after. Now, if you want to do any type of like mascara or eyeliner, um, you basically just do that again with a black paintbrush. You know what? I recommend not going with black actually. Let's do a color fill adjustment layer. Solid color. There we go. We'll go with dark red. I'll go to multiply. All right. We'll hit Control or Command I on this layer mask. I really like being able to choose my color afterwards. And I'm a big, big believer that if you can avoid painting with black, you should. Cause black just kind of like, it takes all the life out of, out of things. Like if you can, you know, paint with like a really dark, dark brown or whatever, I think that's always gonna be better than black. Black just like doesn't, really exist in nature. All right. If you're a professional makeup artist and you're watching this, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're like, what are you doing over there? I don't know. All right, we're gonna paint this back invisible here. There we go. Just painting with my brush tool. All right. Cool. And now this one, I'm gonna double click right here and we're gonna choose a different color now. It can be this dark red here. It just, black is just, see how it like takes all the color and life out of it? Just, yeah, I just think black is not always the best choice. All right, there we go, like a very dark, dark red. Looks enough like black, but it's not. All right, now I'm gonna double click there, Alt or Option, click and drag from the right to the left here to make sure it's not visible where the underlying layer is lighter just where it's darker, and then it's gonna start picking up on these things. All right, let's be sure to paint white on my layer mask right over here. lower the opacity a little bit. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna create a new layer. Let's group this with itself. We'll call this eyebrows. Eyebrows are also super easy to make, guys. Um, basically, just grab your brush tool. Make sure your hardness is about 90%. Just type in 90. Go ahead and choose your color. You can hold Alt or Option to sample a color from your image. All right, and then you just wanna choose a nice small brush and just start painting little lines. Now, if you're using a pressure sensitive tablet, this is gonna be pretty easy and fun for you. If you're not, it's gonna be a little bit trickier. Um, just a general note, as far as like retouching goes, I would highly recommend 
getting a pressure sensitive tablet if you're um, if you're somewhat serious about like retouching um, just Photoshop in general they make things much easier give you a lot of control and uh, it's really it you know it's a tool that's specially made to to do this sort of thing so anytime you got that you know if you can use the the special thing that is made for exactly what you're gonna do that's you know it's oftentimes a good <laughs> a good thing I wanted to go cut down this tree but all I had was this fish oh have you tried using like a saw oh they make tools for that <laughs> I had no idea you mean I don't have to try to use this fish Any Monty Python fans out there? Cut down the largest tree in the forest with a herring? <laughs> All right, there we go. We'll sample that dark color there. All right, and then I'm just gonna go in here and kind of clean up some of this, some of these hairs. All right, and again, I'm not in like the camp of like, everyone needs to look absolutely perfect. I, I just don't, it's not interesting to me, but if you are, then just keep going. All right, yeah. So now we're, I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool on the outside to clean up the brows a little bit. So clone stamp, sample right there and paint right over top of there. All right. Cool. Now with your clone stamp tool, you just want to be sure if you're painting on a new layer that you have current and below selected as where you want to sample. Very nice. All right, I'm pretty sure I just messed that up. If you mess anywhere up, <laughs> just turn it into a teaching point. If you mess up anywhere, just erase it and try again. I mess up all the time. If you're not messing up at all, then give me a call. And come work for me. I'll hire you. I've never made a mistake ever. You're hired. All right. <laughs> there we go. Cleaning up the eyebrows a little bit. Let's just clean up these little hairs too. Yeah, that actually does look pretty nice with all those cleaned up. Nice straight line there. Beautiful. All right, cool. So we've gone over the eyeshadow. We've gone over the eyeliner. We've gone over adding lashes and the brow. Let's go ahead and click on the before and the after here. Um, there we go. There's our before and the after. Beautiful. I, I really do think that you know, <laughs> I'm partial because it's my, I just did it, but I think it actually looks really good. All right, next we're gonna add a little bit of lipstick. Now, in my experience, it's really tough to like totally just add lipstick. So we're just gonna do, um, we're gonna do everything we can to like darken the lips and give them a little bit more color. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is grab a hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'm just gonna go ahead and crank up that saturation. 
Okay, now I'm gonna hit Control Command I to invert my layer mask. All right, and we're just gonna paint white right over top of the lips. And we're done. Not really. All right, I'm gonna make this relatively subtle, a lot more subtle than it is now. Um, all right. Cool. So the next thing I wanna do is around the edges, I wanna make a very large brush with a soft edge and I'm gonna paint black in a little circle just like this so it kind of feathers out on the left and the right. We did that on the top and bottom. So my layer mask looks like this. You can see how I painted white and then I grabbed a large brush and like did this with black. That helps it feather out, which is gonna make it look a lot more realistic. All right, now we're gonna zoom out because we wanna be able to see what we're doing. I'm gonna double click on the layer and we can work on changing color here. So let's yeah, let's go something like that, it's kind of neat. I don't need my saturation to be too far up. There we go. And you can do things like change your lightness as well. All right, I'm gonna bring my lightness back down to zero, bring our saturation down. Let's find something that looks good with this image. Whoa. All right, I think just, yeah, right there is looking pretty good. All right, so nothing crazy there. Now, the next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna double click on this adjustment layer and I'm gonna tell this not to be vis visible where the underlying layer is lighter. And that's gonna keep it away from these highlights. Alt or Option, and I'm gonna click and drag from the right side to the left. All right. And there we go. Let's see the before and the after. You can see it just blends in a lot more naturally now. All right. Cool, looking good. And if you wanna go ahead and add a second color to this, um, well, you can do this in a lot of ways. I'm gonna try a, let's go to a color balance adjustment layer. I'm gonna grab my shadows and our shadows we're gonna to push towards red now. Now, remember I already created a layer mask here for this hue saturation. So instead of creating a new one for the color balance, I'm just gonna copy it. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, click on the hue saturation layer mask and drag it right up to the color balance and let go. And there we go. All right, now here my color balance, go back to our shadows. I can start adjusting the colors however I'd like. There we go, we'll go to our mid-tones. All right, and finally our highlights. Put a little bit of that on there, that's kind of cool. All right. Cool, you know what, earlier when we started, we did the hue saturation adjustment layer, but after having just done this color balance, I'm gonna go ahead and suggest using color balance instead because actually I, I think it works a lot nicer. I wanna make sure this isn't visible where the underlying layer is lighter also, so it stays away from messing with the highlights too much. So let's double click there, hold Alt or Option, and I'm gonna click and drag from the right to the left. All right. There we go, looking good. Yeah, let's keep them both on. Actually, it looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and click those and hit Command G. We got a little bit of lipstick on there. It's not much, and like I said, in my experience, if like trying to just like paint a totally new lip color on there, um, I've never, never, I just haven't had any luck with like making it look real. Um, so I'm not gonna teach you something that like doesn't look great. But I think if you got pink lips, you can go to the left and the right with them just a little bit. Um, and I, I think that for the most part, 
yeah, like you could go there. That looks real. You know, that looks real. That looks real. It's starting to look a bit fake. All right, there we go. Cool. Well, they definitely have some shimmer to them. All right, you know what? I should. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, we'll double click on that and call that libs. All right, cool. And the last thing we're going to do is show you guys how to add a little bit of blush and a little bit of um, contouring if you want to do that. OK, so for blush, what we're going to do, same like we did earlier. I'm going to grab a solid color adjustment layer. We're going to go to that color, change this from overlay. Now we're going to choose soft light because brush blush, we want to be nice and soft. On my layer mask, I'm going to hit Command I to invert it. And then we're going to choose a really large soft brush and paint with about like a 10% flow, just right in this area. You want to focus right over here. All right, and we're going to make sure we get both cheeks there. All right, I'm going to actually use my move tool and kind of move this around to like get to the right place. All right, that looks good. Set to soft light. Now we can choose how much color we want. See, like that's a very different effect from that. And we can choose color as well, which I think for the most part, you want to choose a nice red because it is blush after all. Oh, clicked on the wrong thing. All right. Let's bring our color down a little bit more. Cool, looking good. Let's hit OK. It's a little bit too high on the left there. So we're just going to use our brush tool and paint black there. And now I'm going to paint white right over there. Beautiful. All right. There we have some blush. And last but not least, let's do some contouring. All right, again, with this color, I'm gonna go from normal down to multiply, okay? I'm gonna double click here, and I don't want this to be visible where the underlying layer is lighter. So I'm gonna click it and drag from the left to the right, making sure I hold option first. And that's gonna help it get in the right place. All right. Now, on this layer mask, I'm gonna hit Command or Control I, and we're going to paint. Make sure you're painting with a flow of like 10% here. Let's turn our brush off, blush off. And what we want to do is I want to paint in a shape like a little triangle. I want to paint in a shape like this. Basically, what it does is it, it makes our cheekbones stand out a little bit more by making this area darker here. OK. All right, kind of connects down to the lip there and back up. And you can kind of create like a triangle here as well, which helps. And if you need to, you can paint on either side of the nose. That's going to help you look nice and contoured. All right. So there we go. Let's grab our brush tool. We're going to paint in those areas. You know what? I'm going to, just for a test, let's just try this. Let's try painting like rather like firmly. I've never done this before. It's just a test. All right, we're going to paint like that. And then I'm just going to add a blur to this. So we'll go to filter, blur and to Gaussian blur. And then I'm just going to choose a blur until it starts to like, look real. All right, let's choose a little bit more blur. A little bit more. All right, that looks pretty good, actually. Turn it off and on. And then, you know what? I think it needs a little bit more color, just to look real. All right. Achoo! Excuse me. Sneezing all over the place. All right, and we're gonna lower the opacity down a little bit. I think this contouring stuff is really cool, but generally I, I wouldn't say go too 
don't go too crazy with it. All right. Let's double click here and make sure that it's not visible where the underlying layer is lighter. And hit OK. All right. So I would say either contour or blush. I would say like probably not both. All right. And the contouring looks good. The blush. I painted over her eye. You probably saw that and you were like, Ooh, what are you doing? You painted over her eye. Um, yeah, don't, you don't want to paint blush over someone's eye. There we go. There's our blush and our contouring. But as far as techniques go, pretty much the same. All right, let's bring our contouring down. And as always, whenever I do something in Photoshop, I like to go in and turn those layers off and on and then just kind of make sure that I haven't overdone it. Like the eyeshadow was too much. So we're going to just bring that down just a little bit. All right. There we go. That's helping us look a lot more real. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and group all of those. And we're going to show you the before and the after. Here's our before and the after. How to add makeup in Photoshop. Guys, thanks so much for watching this section. Thanks so much for getting the entire tutorial. I super appreciate it. I hope you learned a ton and had a lot of fun. I'll floor you later. Bye, everyone.